Hey guys, it's Coach Zach with Ultimate Baseball Training. Today's video, we're gonna go through seven different pitch grips. I'm gonna give you pointers on each one so that you can develop those and execute those pitches properly. Let's get going. All right, the first one we're gonna talk about today is the basic four-seam fastball. So whatever you, what you're gonna do is just find the, find the horseshoe of the baseball right here and just, you can put your fingers together or separate. So just making sure we're getting across all four of those seams. Um, whenever you release this pitch, really want to make sure that we're getting really through the ball and pulling down on those on those laces with uh, your fingertips so that way we're getting as straight of a pitch and getting through that ball to make sure we're getting as much velocity as we can as well. Uh, at, now we got a four seam fastball, I want to talk about another kind of fastball uh, called the two seam fastball. Your two seam fastball is going to get a little bit more movement to your, your arm side, um, a little bit more sink to it as well. Um, how we're going to grip this pitch is with the forcing on the horseshoe, now we're just going to get into kind of the, the runway of the baseball right, right in the middle. Um, you can also go fingers apart on the seams or you can go fingers together in between the seams. I, I personally, I like to go in between the seams just to, to get more through the ball. Uh, the, the biggest thing with the two seam fastball to make it, to make you get the, the arm side run that you want is making sure we're putting as much pressure on the, on the fingertip of our index finger as we can. That's going to allow the ball to move and to travel in the way that you want it to go. With the four seam and two seam fastball especially, you don't want to get too fancy with, the, with these pitches. You can get fancy with your, your change ups, your curve balls and sliders, but obviously everything runs off of a fastball, especially for young pitchers. You got have to and have to develop a fastball first. You have to be able to command your fastball if you want to pitch. So really making sure we're not trying to do anything crazy, do too much with our fastball except for trying to get those located in the zone and being able to command those as much as we can. So now we have our two fastballs out of the way, we're going to move on to our first off-speed pitch which is going to be our change-up. Change-up is the first first off-speed pitch that I re recommend for young pitchers just because it's a lot less stress on the arm and it's a lot, there's a lot less risk for injury as opposed to trying to develop a curveball or a slider at such a young age. So a changeup is a really, really good pitch to develop. And the, the younger you can develop a good changeup, the better off that you're going to be as, as you keep going throughout your baseball career. So there's a couple different uh, different variations of the changeup that we can that we can go through. I'm going to show you the grips of all of them. If you use a predominantly a four seam fastball, you want to try to make your changeup look the same the same way. That way, the hitter out of the hand thinks it's a fastball. So we're, we're going to get on the same horseshoe of the baseball as our four seam fastball, but all we're going to do is add a third finger to that. Obviously the more friction on the ball, the slower the ball is going to go, and that's what's going to make, make you have an effective changeup. So we're going to get three fingers on the ball and just try to throw it as normal as we can. If you get some pronation out of it to get some arm side run and sink, that's okay. That's going to make your pitch a little bit better, honestly. All right, so now on the opposite of that, if you are predominantly a two seam guy, this grip can also work for you. But what we're going to do is we're just going to move that ball to the runway as same, same way as our two seam fastball. And again, just adding a, another finger in there. What I would recommend on this one though, is to make sure we're getting our middle finger on the inside of that seam. So that way when we release it, we can kind of get some pressure on that. And that's going to force the ball to go to our arm side and get that sink. And, the movement that we want to throw the hitter off balance. The next one I'm going to talk about is uh, a little bit more complex as far as the release point and the pressure points that we're going to use to make this pitch move effectively the way we want to. It's going to be a, a circle change up. You can hold, hold your circle right there or you can also kind of hold it on, on the inside of the seams, whatever feels better for you. But with the circle change up, we're going to be basing this more off of um, pronation. So pronate, what I mean is we're trying to get as much force on the inside of the ball as we can. And so we're almost trying to release, we're almost trying to put more pressure on our middle finger, trying to get in, inside of the baseball. That way we can make it move the way we want. With a box change, the ones I showed previously, we want more of a fastball type of spin. The way the hitter thinks it's a fastball out of the hand. But with the circle change up, we're looking for a little bit more movement. And to get that a little bit more movement that, that we want, we're going to have to accept a little bit more side spin on that. So 
the hitter's gonna see that a little bit earlier, but you're also gonna get a, a little bit more movement out of that as well. Uh, the next pitch that we're gonna move on to is a slider. Um, a slider is not meant to be a, a huge break. It's not really meant to be a slow pitch as far as velocity terms. It's typically eight to 10 miles an hour slower than your fastball usually is. So we're looking for, we're looking for side spin on the baseball. So how we're gonna do that there's a couple different ways that we can we can tinker around with our grip. So the first one we're going to get just get the, the middle of the baseball right here, and we're going to try to go across across the seams like that. So that way we're hooking that hooking that seam right there, as you can see right there, and we're just trying to pull down on that. So that way when we pull down on that, we can kind of get the side spin that we want. We're not looking to get a huge hump out of the hand. We're not looking for, to have the ball come up out of the hand, we're trying to make that pitch come out of the hand like a fastball and just kind of fade away sharply to our glove side. Another grip on it, I want to show you guys with the slider. Um, if that doesn't feel comfortable for you and you want to get a little bit more, more on the seam with this pitch, we can rotate the ball one turn like that. So that way we're kind of getting in between uh, the seam right here. And what we want to do is split the seam with our fingers and almost kind of almost kind of hook, hook and put some pressure on that middle finger on the, on the inside of that seam right there. And that way, we can, when we get the, as much pressure as we can on that, that's also gonna allow us to pull, really pull down on that, on that seam and that lace and get the side spin that we want so we can get the movement that we want to. Next pitch we're gonna move on to today is the curveball. Um, I would recommend this be one of, the, one of the last pitches that you really develop, especially if you're a young pitcher, just because it's a very tough pitch to throw, and if not done correctly, it, it makes so much, so much stress on your, on your arm and your elbow if not done correctly. So uh, really make sure you, you're a pretty experienced player before you kind of move on trying, trying to add this pitch to your arsenal. So there's a couple different ways that uh, we can throw this. The main thing, the main concept that we want to do to get the movement and the, the spin that we want is to make sure we're getting on, we're getting pretty high up on that seam. That way we have a lot of seam on our middle finger to really pull down with and get and get as much spin and movement at, as we can. So you can either hold it with your fingers together like that, or if you feel comfortable trying to get a little bit more velocity out of it and adding a spike or a, a knuckle right there, you can also do that. But the main point of this pitch is the positioning and the pressure on your middle finger. So that way when you release that ball, you get as much as much torque and you can uh, develop as much spin on that pitch as possible. So a common misconception that we often see uh, with curveballs, especially when uh, they're, getting, they're getting developed at a younger age, we get, caught, we get so caught up in just seeing how, mu like how much it, the ball breaks, where, whereas if a ball is breaking 15 inches but it's 20 miles an hour slower than your fastball is, it doesn't matter how much it breaks, the hitter is going to see that as soon as it comes out of hand, they're just going to be able to sit on it. So whenever you're trying to develop this pitch, making sure that you have a pretty good ratio between the velocity uh, of your fastball and, the, and your curveball, I would sacrifice a little bit of break for some extra velo. That way it's, that it's just a little bit more harder for the hitter to, to pick up. It's harder for the hitter to hit, and they can't really get under it as easily as if it was that much slower. All right, these next two pitches are not really your most common pitches, but, all, but just pitches that you can add to your arsenal uh, if you're just looking to tinker around with something or show these pitches a couple times a game to keep the hitters off balance. Um, so the first one we're gonna talk about is, is a cutter. Um, I'm sure most of you guys have heard of uh, Mariano Rivera. He was one of the greatest closers uh, that's been in the game and he threw a cutter uh, almost every pitch. So it can definitely be, be effective if thrown correctly. So the point of a cutter is, it's mainly going to try to get as much fastball spin on on this pitch as we can, but we're trying to really throw throw this pitch almost on the outside of the pitch, so that way we can get that glove side run that we want. A couple ways you can do this, or you can take your four seam fastball grip, where you're kind of in the middle of that horseshoe, and just kind of kind of get it on the outside of that, so that way when you when you release that pitch, you're releasing it and getting outside of it. That's that's what's going to give you the movement, the small movement that you want. If that grip doesn't really feel that comfortable for you or you're not really getting the, the movement that you want, we can also try to 
to kind of flip the ball a little bit and get on, get a little bit more on the outside of the grip I showed you with the slider. And but the difference in this this pitch and the slider is we're trying, we're we're trying to throw this pitch a little bit more like a fastball because obviously we want the movement to be a lot a lot smaller. We don't really want much depth with this pitch. We just want as much horizontal mo late horizontal movement as we can get. The last pitch we're going to talk about today is uh, is a sinker. Um, I would really recommend this for the more experienced players, just because it's very hard to get this pitch um, to look distinctly different than a fastball. At a young age, like, they kind of blend together and they don't really act the same way. They can't really, re they don't really repeat themselves. So I would really recommend at a, at a higher age that if you think this could be a pitch that would help, would help you, I would wait till then to try to develop it. The sinker, we're trying to get. It's almost kind of the same same movement pattern as a, as a two seam fastball, but it's going to be a little bit slower, and we're trying to get a little bit more depth than horizontal movement with this pitch. So the grip is really key on on certain pressure points. So we're going to pretty much with this grip is going to be we're going to get our, our two seam fastball grip, and we're just going to go up a little bit a little bit on that. And if you want to, you can kind of turn turn the ball a little bit if you would like if you feel more comfortable trying to get that that finger on a lace but having a lot of pressure on this index finger that's what's ultimately going to allow the ball to move down as you release it with this pressure and so we're trying to we're not trying to trying to pronate really we're just trying to make sure we can keep this pressure on us on a, the ball on the scene whatever feels comfortable for you and really trying to make sure that we're driving through and throwing throwing this pitch through this finger all right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to take some of these pitch grips and implement them into your game, feel free to do so. Before you go, um, we put together a free, 100% free cheat sheet down below in the description. Um, it shows you all the grips that we talked about today. So that way you can work on them in practice, you can work on them at home, and really uh, add these pitches to your arsenal. It's 100% free, so do not forget to do that. Um, thanks for watching, and before you go, like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Have a good one.